gyms. Like we we traveled to a different gym every single day. Like a boxing gym to a jiu-jitsu gym. Oh, it was just a group of guys yeah, that kind of... Like, yeah, we used to call it the DC Prodigies because uh, we didn't have... It was just a team back then before it was like a gym. Uh-huh. But now it's a gym, so... So who started... Who owns the gym? Uh, Darren and Cody. Cody's uh, right there. He, he was fighting under me. Cody Stateman? Yes. Yep. So that's where you started out. Now you came out with us because uh, Krushank was yeah. on Team Faber... Yeah. For Tough Live. Yeah. He was actually, Faber wanted, that was his number yeah, one that's, pick. Yeah, that's what I was told. Darren yeah, Cruikshank yeah. was, Faber wanted, was, we all, we all cast a ballot when we picked guys. We, we, we <laughs> took, we picked our top five. My number one, Ale Quinta. Oh, uh, okay. Not bad pick, if you ask me. He's doing well right now. Doing He's, real uh, well. He just knocked out Ross Pearson. That's a huge win. Yeah, that's big really time. Big and the cool thing about that is Ross Pearson was a coach on Team Cruz during that season. Oh. That nice. Yeah, so it's pretty sweet that Al knocked him out. But Detroit superstar Darren Krushank, who's also doing really good right now. He is. He's just coming off a big win against. Uh, uh, that, what's that black guy's name? Is that? Uh, and Jaquani. Well, <laughs> and yeah. Jaquani. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, and yeah. he's fighting KJ. KJ uh, Nunes, yeah. That would be a good fight. That's so good, Krushank's fighting KJ, KJ Nunes? Nunes, yeah. yeah. I think that's a good fight for Krushank. It is. Darren's really good at picking styles apart, and I feel like that's a fight that uh, Darren's going to be able to map out very well and, like, really pick a shot. Yeah, I feel KJ's more you – know, he's just coming with some boxing. Yeah, Darren's really good at, like, picking people that have – Dude, and Krushank's coming with the kung fu. You know <laughs> what I mean? Chong. Yeah, for real, though. I mean, we got yeah, yeah, yeah. spinning kicks. We got – you know, he's a Whatever dynamic fighter, want. and he's a good-ass wrestler, too. Yeah, he'll do it all. And, and, and Krushank's one of the guys who – when we when uh, we picked him, he was developed as a fighter. Like yeah, he's he, been he since he's yeah he kid. was already <laughs> like you know his potential as a fighter was there. He he got caught by Vic, which was crazy. Uh, he got knocked out by by who uh, by uh, James Vic. James Vic. Yeah. What that guy that guy was on the show right? Yeah, he was, he was a real show. tall he's guy. Like, tall. Yeah. Is that guy tall. in the UFC or yeah? What's he's, his deal? He's plagued with injuries or something. Is he? He trains with the uh, what's his face the the rapist guy. Um, um, what's his uh, name? Hermes Master Franca? Irvin? No, the other rapist guy. <laughs> Master Irvin, right? No, Master Lloyd Irvin, yeah. Lloyd, oh, Irvin. Lloyd, Irvin. Lloyd Irvin is like his coach. Oh, I love that. Uh, yeah, you know, that <laughs> you, joke. You love Master Lloyd Irvin? No, no. You remember the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> the his music video, his hype yeah. video? Yeah, he's got a Pretty hilarious sure hype video himself. on YouTube. Who does? <laughs> Master Lloyd Irvin. No, he doesn't. Yeah, it's bad. I, is it really? I don't know. It's really bad. Hey, Jason, don't pull that video up. <laughs> don't yeah, pull it up. No, that's not cool. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad. But anyways, there was a whole scandal with Lloyd Irvin. And, yeah, and I remember. The whole team of jiu-jitsu guys raping girls. and. No, it was like, one, I, I guess the story was that it was one guy from the gym raped some girl in like the parking lot of the gym or something like that no and there's multiple there was accounts like, lloyd irvin was charged with rape as a young man fuck yeah as a young Still man making loads of money yeah and then like he got charged lives. again and then he bought up uh lloyd irvin rape all the google search on youtube so if you look up lloyd Ir- or on, on google when you when you google lloyd irvin rape yeah the articles don't come up where he's charged and stuff lloyd irvin rape defense comes up because he he his google search he like manipulated it to go to his own website really dude the guy is the guy's a, a, a creep, master man. scam artist he's a, he's a master scam artist dude, yeah, in the like, rape world and in the, the the marketing world he could tell you how to live your life people yeah. pay to like get he makes people from call him. him master and shit yeah dude that's that, that boggles my fucking mind well dude. i'm gonna start trying to have people call me master some of the up and coming well i told I, I had everybody i told people they need to call me lord yeah lord conrad <laughs> lord conrad yeah, yeah. Like you just tell do people just go up and you just tell them you need to call me master. Well, hey, no, if you that. if you if you got martial arts skills and you're trying to ch- and people are trying to get those skills from you, call me fucking master. How about that? Yeah, why? Well, I, I don't understand. Well, that. then you don't want the skills. I guess not. Well, I guess not. I, so I have a master's degree, so I should be able to be called masters. If what anything. do I want from you? I don't know some knowledge. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can just bullshit your way. Who's bullshitting their way? Mar- Master Lloyd Irvin. Yeah, and he's a fucking con artist. <laughs> he, that's what I'm saying. Hey, there's plenty of con artist wrestlers too. There's wrestlers yes. who come in here who I see like uh, who's your boy Eric Albertson. Yeah, he's definitely a. F- <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but the, no one respects him in the wrestling world. Dude, he's world. F- uh, he's like a national hero in Brazil now. Yeah, because he's going into the martial arts world where he's, you can be a fucking car artist. A, well, a foreign country also. What's that? In a foreign, foreign country, co- exactly. But I mean, he was with Zahudo forever, gold medalist. Yeah, what's going on with that guy? 
I don't know. Not making weight, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Too durable to get it. God, I wish I could see that film of him falling down the hill. Oh, God. When I wish. Stud boy fucking went down the hill. God. Just, dude, I love when Buckles tells the story, too, because Carlito's, like, walking his dog down this hill. And it's a super steep hill, right. and he's, like, scared. He wants to maybe go around it, but he yeah. decides to do it. And he starts, like, walking down it. I guess misses his foot the first couple of steps, and so he has to sprint down the fucking hill. He's, like, running with his leash above his head. Yeah, poor little Chomsky, who's a tiny little three-pound dog. Oh, like, but, so yeah. first Carlito, first he looks down this path, and it's pretty steep. It's a pretty steep grade. And he goes, should we go down this path? And I go... If you want to go down this path, we can go around whatever you want. And he's all like, uh, uh, well, Chomsky wants to go down the path. And Chomsky's <laughs> a little three-pound dog, and he's trying to run down it. I'm like, let's go down the path. So he has one of those uh, retractable leashes mm -hmm. that comes back. And Chomsky takes off down the hill. <laughs> and for some reason, Carlino just goes down the hill like same speed. <laughs> gets his hands above his head. Like, that's <laughs> waving him. Dude, his legs get tripped up. He goes into a fucking roll. Like, rolls like eight times at the bottom of the hill. Like, thank God he didn't kill Chomsky. You know what I mean? Thank God. He hops up. And he just starts talking about how durable he is. Like he's like, God, I am durable. Like, just, just, what the fuck? I fell like twenty feet and rolled right Dude, out of there. Hey, so, Dude, I'm durable as fuck. So hey, I'm dying laughing, like dying laughing. We get back to his house like fifteen minutes later, and he's sitting on the park bench in front of his old house. He's trying to figure it out. And I just I look between his legs, and his pants are torn. <laughs> his dick <laughs> is sitting like right on top of his balls, just <laughs> resting right there. And I'm dying laughing. And he goes, What? What? Something, dude, I'm sorry. He goes, what, what? Something on my face? And he starts wiping his face. like. <laughs> and I go, dude, your dick is out. And he stands and goes, oh, fuck. These are my favorite shorts. <laughs> they are. They were my favorite shorts. <laughs> you still have those shorts? No, I threw them out. I don't uh -oh. even know how much I would pay to actually see that go down. Dude, we went back to that hill, me and you, TJ, and yeah. you took a picture of that and tweeted it and said, I wish I was there. I thought. wish I was there. <laughs> Legendary story. That, 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 that uh, underbelly of MMA, man, that's a... That's a scary little business. Thing. Dude, it's hard it's to make nasty, it. Man. I mean, yeah. you, you start you start off not even making enough money to pay for your licensing. You know, like oh, yeah. you don't make Definitely anything. You have to negatives. do side jobs. It's like seven hundred bucks to get all that. Give it hand jobs. <sighs> Between of course. The MRI and the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's about a thousand dollars to get sanctioned to fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. about a thousand bucks, mm -hmm. and a lot of guys are not making anywhere near a thousand. No bucks way. I think I made five hundred bucks my first fight. First pro fight? I made 400 and 400 to win the Icon Sport Hawaii State title. 400 and 400. That was your first fight was in Hawaii? No, no, that was like oh. my fourth fight or something. But, mm. I mean, it was like a – that was a huge show back in the day, yeah. Icon Sport. It was like there was a UFC. I remember There Icon. was King of the Cage, yeah. and there was Icon Sport. And I got paid four and four. I didn't even know how much I was making. I just fought, you know. Yeah. They paid me after. I was like, oh, sweet, 800 bucks. Well, yeah, back then, you know, it's not about the money. It's just about getting used to fighting and hopefully you can one day make some money. You know? Yeah, exactly. My first amateur fight, I've never been more scared, I don't think. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I was so nervous my first amateur You're fight. You're like, you know, I look wrestling. so gay with this camo rash guard on. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> no, I was in Idaho. Oh, it was that's enough, dude, right. <laughs> My first amateur fight was bigger than 15, all my fights. 15,000 people or some shit, Bigger right? than all my fights. Even the uh, Ultimate Fighter finale was smaller than this. It was in Idaho at Boise. Packed really? hockey arena. Packed. Really? Yeah, for an amateur fight. So nice. The whole car was amateur fights. Well, I mean, yeah, that and nice they, that you were nervous, but... Uh, no, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> sweet show. I mean, I got rude awakening to having some people watching you, you know? But I was so nervous that coming like out of wrestling three months of training and fight some dude, <laughs> get locked into a cage and fight him. You know, I haven't even tested my skills ever. So it was a pretty nerve-wracking thing. What'd you do to the guy? Double I leg. finished him first round. What punches? Um, I threw a couple kicks at him, double legged him, ground and pounded him out. I think I might. Have, I might think I might finish where Nick. Did you action. just? Was that? Did you only fight one amateur fight? Two. My second one was here in uh, Sacramento at the Radisson, and uh, I finished him first round with the darts. I, I was at that. I, I was there. I remember that. Yeah, first round with the darts choke. And then you fought the one-legged guy that Chad fought. No, I was supposed to fight that guy. <laughs> Chad fought a one-legged guy? Yeah. Dude, Chad's first pro fight was a guy with a wiffle ball, wiffle ball bat for a leg. I, <laughs> and all we trained was swinging a wiffle ball at Chad because that kick was so fast. It was really fast. Yeah. It was just all bone. He There's seriously no, just had a bone for a leg. There was no leg. muscle on it. Yeah. No way. So he could throw it super we, fast, we, like whipping. He had a full-on thigh muscle, so he used to throw that thing fast. Yeah. So we were a little nervous for Chad, but Chad ground and pounded him out. 
right, so yeah, I think Vic. he won his last fight. Hey, remember on the Ultimate Fighter show when we kidnapped Vic and tied him, hog tied him up? Yeah. Me, you, Kusheng, the party <laughs> palmer. He was hanging out. He they wouldn't all... let us take him, right? We no, we kidnapped his we, ass. Didn't we have to stop? Yeah, and then they fucking, like, the the uh, producers came out and shut us down. Man, we need to coach the Ultimate Fighter again. You we, need to coach the dude, Ultimate we Fighter. So oh, you versus Cruz, man. Oh, that'd be sick. Nice. You versus Cruz. Hey, our old trainer, Master Tong, actually was rooting for Yaya in that fight when he was cornering Joseph. Yeah, because Yaya was his favorite fighter. Yaya was his favorite fighter because he has a giant dick. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. Master Tong, uh, when Yaya would be cutting weight in the sauna, he'd be like licking his he'd lips. He'd just be licking there. his lips, staring at his big old dick. Like, like, <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, Joseph, Joseph, right hand over big fuck sleep. <laughs> As he That's how we describe the fight. Yeah. <laughs> right hand over big fuck sleep.